Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash jumbled. They have over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, MP3 player, or Zune. Bill Gates thanks you. going on everybody welcome back to jumbled your favorite podcast about nothing i'm zach and i am doing the intro because we don't have good enough sense of time and an ability to stop a conversation so that we can have an adequate introduction uh this is a continuation of our uh episode with Lacey. first uh first Part of the episode was uh, mostly heavy on gun control and you know policies in in Canada right now. Uh, second half, we are getting into um, fans only, only fans, whatever the uh, the sites where you pay a subscription uh, per month fee to see uh, either lewd or uh, or sometimes I guess nude uh, photography, whatever um, from specific individuals it's pretty much like netflix for uh for body parts right but um we go through that we talk about sugar daddies and and things of that nature uh it's a very interesting conversation don't want to give any spoilers away but obviously uh you're already here listening so you're going to be um party to it just giving you a little bit of a a forewarning of what we're going to run across, but uh, of course, as is usual, there's plenty of uh, of you know uh, side conversations and and things of that nature, um, things to look out for. So, hope you guys enjoy this one, uh, and then I guess we're gonna we'll wrap it up here at the end, uh, not together. Like I I won't be coming back to record an outro. Because I'll be doing it, and you get how this goes. Anyway, enjoy the podcast, and we'll see you guys. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Eating my Reese's pieces. Just roll the podcast. What do you think, Lacey? This is a this is a great segue. What do you think about the explosion of fans only websites? Yo, I've been thinking about it. I may or may not have signed up for seeking arrangements. I'm just pending approval on my photo. <laughs> Okay, those are two very different things. Two and I very different things. Them. But... <laughs> so I don't know. The okay, let's let's start with fans artists. only. Yes, the amount of tattoo artists that are hot girl tattoo artists that have started an OnlyFans page is actually crazy. But there's some girls where they have, let's say, forty thousand people on Instagram. You know, let's be nice and just say half, but it's probably more than half is creepy fucking dudes. Mm. So now you can make them pay a monthly prescription for sexy selfies you are probably going to post anyway for free. Mm. I see nothing wrong with it. Get it, girl. I think yeah. I don't I'm not against it at all. I I think it's a really interesting thing and I wonder what the the economic impact is going to be I think in it's going to be oversaturated and, and supply, right? Like Yeah. If you are a like what would be a like what was late ten year ago? Lacey making her first tattoo job shop. Ooh, I think my first year, I made like twenty five grand, like nothing. It was minimum wage, but I worked like a dog. Mm-hmm. I was working nine to nine, six to seven days a week. <laughs> exactly. So like hard, yeah. hard hours, right? Yeah. And and so say this happened ten years ago, and you were making you know, basically $3 an hour. And then you, this happens. You're like, well, I can't do that. What am I going to do? You're like, well, I'm good looking. So, and there's this website and I don't even have to show my vagina and people will pay to see. That's the thing. You don't have to do anything. You're just in a fucking bikini. And they're like, yeah, 10 bucks. Here you go. Okay. Thanks. So you start doing that and yeah, maybe you're only making a thousand bucks a month instead of, you know, two. But you're like, yeah. it's doing something super fucking easy. Like, right. would I yeah. go back to tattooing? Would I go back to that job? Would I? And I actually read an article prior to this about a, a young woman in the UK who was like, I think she was going to Oxford or something. And then opened a 
Is it fans only or only fans? I don't remember. I don't know. I always get it. Only fans. Only fans. And uh, um, uh, and only fans. And then we started making so much money because she has like a apparently a, a uniquely shaped butt. And what does that? There's mean? like a market. I don't know. It was like big and like kind of heart shaped. I don't know. See, like I think I could get like an Amazon dominatrix page. That would be my niche for sure. I'll sit yeah, on cakes sure. and stuff. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even think you have to go that far to make money, to be honestly. Um, and she was like, I realized that I am making more money now than I would make in the career path of going through school. So mm-hmm. I'm going to capitalize on this. And her, and it was like a, a story about like how her family, like trying to figure that, that out. Right. And she was like, and they're like, well, someday you're not going to be pretty enough to do this. She's like, well, I'm pretty sure there's a, like gilf porn is fairly com- like commonly uh <laughs> yeah. searched right yeah. yeah and well and realistically if you're making that kind of money you're not going to age you're gonna get botox and fillers and whatever I mean, that's a really good counterpoint but you're gonna look the same look at the kardashians kim yeah, kardashian's almost 40 i would yeah. fuck the shit out of her <laughs> i mean i i can think of, there's definitely 40 year olds in this world Sure. That don't have that much work that I would, you know, there's, I would. Yes. That are still beautiful lifestyle, yeah. genetics, whatever. Yeah. But there's um, also this thing where like, as I've gotten older, my taste in women has also matured. So like, I don't understand the attraction to like teen porn, like 18, 19 year old mm-hmm. girls in porn. Like to me, I'm, I'm like, too. I'm there too. Ugh. That's Especially, a sign of being yeah. old. So <laughs> when I'm 60 and I want to look at porn, you know, that like 40 year, 50 year old girl on only fans or whatever is going to be like, real yeah, nice. that, it's not going to maybe apply to 18 year old John, but 65 year old John's be like, yeah, that's, that'll get me going. Yeah. Right. So it's an interesting piece. Um, I'm excited to see what happens. I think what people are willing to pay. So like I have this, this moral dilemma. Zach and I actually talked about this around what is cheating. Mm-hmm. and like is paying for porn cheating oh yes i texted you about this we, it was on an episode right yeah you, you did send me a message so i didn't want to talk to you about this i know we're going a little bit over time but i was late and i'm happy to hang out i don't you have anywhere good. i don't have anywhere to be let's Lacey. turn it into a two-parter two-parter oh that's first ambitious. half political second half boners <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Right. So to remind viewers that we had, Zach and I had a conversation around, you know, porn and what is cheating and how do you define cheating? And if is paying for porn cheating or is watching porn cheating? And we kind of said, no, like, I think it's more or less accepted now that almost everyone will watch porn on some level. That doesn't right. necessarily mm-hmm. mean like hardcore gangbang or even like penetration, but some, some kind of sexually you know, designed images to excite yourself. Although I got to say, it's sort of weird if you're watching porn without penetration. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, no, it's weird. It's like you into. might as well be watching like Skinamax, right? That's, ba- that's basically really what you're that watching. That really depends what you're into though. You know? But some like dudes that's... just get off on a photo of a naked chick. And it's not even a video. It's just titties. Everyone loves titties. I went through that phase, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, you know, everyone's Google got their boots. thing, Zach. I'm not kink so, shaming. I'm not kink shaming at all. And then it was, what, like, what, like, is it cheating if it's someone you know? Like, if I know a stripper, and I go, and I get a lap dance, and it's kind of, it would likely be kind of more of like a, it's a business transaction. Sure. Mm-hmm. One. Is it's not quite prostitution, but there's contact and you do know, so th- that would maybe be weirder. Mm-hmm. But if it's someone I don't know, it's kind of like, yeah, whatever. Like you're just you know, doing whatever. And is that the same if it's visual? And like, there are people who now have OnlyFans, and I'm like, well, I want to know what you're posting, and mm-hmm. not necessarily of like. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's some I'm like, I kind of want to know what you look like naked. I'm willing to yeah. pay this. But there's also some that are, I'm like, 
I just I'm just really intrigued into like what this means. Like what like what is actually I've never looked at an OnlyFans thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So and what like, yeah, what's it like? And especially like there are some fitness people I, I've noticed it with like Lacey said with you know attractive tattoo artists and I've noticed it a lot with fitness people right mm-hmm. men and men and women and a lot of them have said like like not nudes like I'm not posting porn but I do have more risque photos on this platform that you can pay for mm-hmm. and I was like what are people willing to pay for that's not nudes because I don't believe in paying for porn and then if this is porn this goes against my never pay for porn thing but now I have this general <laughs> curiosity both of from like a horny, mm-hmm. like pervy teenage boy mentality of, well, I want to know what your boobs look like, but mm-hmm. also like, what is, I want to understand the craze and like, what are you doing? Like, how are you positioning your body without showing off naked, like being fully naked? Right. That's willing for someone to want to spend sometimes $30 a month. Well, and I think that's part of it is it's yeah. the, the curiosity. So even if they sign up for one month and cancel, that's 30 bucks that that girl just got. That's well, true. and then you see like how many followers they have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like how many subscribers they have. I'm like doing the mental math. And I was like, so you're making, I mean, they're going to take a big cut likely. So, but I mean, mental math, if you say it's 30 bucks and, or whatever, and you have X amount of followers, like you're making 2000, like gross 2000 or $3,000 a month. Yeah. Doing this. Like, would you stop that? Is it like, and then there's these, like, there's the shame aspect to it. Cause it's still shaming. Mostly, mostly women are doing it right now. And I did mm-hmm. see a story about a woman who has an only fans and her coworkers found it and were looking at it at the workplace. And then she got fired for it. Hmm. See, I think that's bullshit. Now, maybe this is because I'm an artist, but at the end of the day, a human body is a human body. Right. So I don't see a big deal in nudity and posting nude photos and doing something like an OnlyFans if you have a professional career. Because guess what? All your coworkers are just as naked underneath their clothes. Yeah. And if you're doing something in your own time, it doesn't it doesn't affect the business whatsoever. Right. And I, I don't know. I think that's it's just shitty because if... You also got to think if the tables were flipped, if it was a guy who had a picture where he's just like in tight underwear and he has like a Jason Derulo dick, he probably wouldn't get fired. They'd be like, bro, I saw it sick. And that'd be it. So there's also the double standard to it as Mm -hmm. well. So that's a piece that really uh, bugs me with it. Yeah. Yeah. And that there's like this slut shaming, kink shaming, like all of that around it. And it's like, well, to me, this is someone doing what they can to support themselves and their family. Yeah. And, and, and you're just jealous. You're not getting paid as much to do the same thing. Well, yeah. And like, I'm like, Hey man, if, if they have people willing to pay and they're comfortable doing it, fuck yeah, go for it. Like I support yeah. you. Mm-hmm. They, they, they should definitely have the right to do it. But my thing is like, anytime it would come to the point where I would be at the point of like clicking a box to accept, you know, charges or whatever. I would just quickly stop and be like, there are probably like, if I'm in the mental space of wanting to see risque photos, I can find risque photos on Instagram. Right. Like you can Zach always beat off before you make a big decision. (laughs) It's like going to the grocery store. Hungry, man. You can't do it. You gotta, I made that mistake this week. (laughs) Spent like $400. Oh my God, dude bought so much food we have so much food now but seriously like i me personally i would be able to stop myself before making that 30 dollar a month commitment and i could just reroute my thoughts and say well i can just go find free stuff other other places where i can save my money i don't know how sustainable that platform as a whole is going to be it sort of seems like Even it might be like a flash in temporary. the pan. Yeah, it might just be yeah. a flash in the pan sort of thing. I don't feel like it's going to be something that sticks around for a long time, though. Hmm. What about from the perspective of... Uh, like, Ali and I are both very lucky to still 
have fairly stable jobs. Sure. Like we're working from home and we have challenges like anyone in the workplace. And yeah. I would say comparatively, ours are not as scary and severe as a lot of people are suffering. We're very thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And I like see some people who I assume are struggling and have this. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't necessarily be like, hey, do you want this money? Because that's kind of a dick move. Mm-hmm. But if you have like, we're trying to shop local and we're trying to like buy things from people and, mm-hmm. you know, like little things like we, I cleaned out the shed on the weekend. I had to take stuff to the dump and I was like, I don't really want to deal with this right now. I don't have to deal with it. And I looked on like our local version of Craigslist, Kijiji, mm-hmm. and there was a guy who's like had a post of like, doesn't have a job, has a truck, is looking to do whatever. So I messaged him and said, hey, I have one bed load of shit that needs to go to the dump. The dump fees are going to be $25. What do you want to pick it up? And he was like, I don't know, just give me an extra 50 bucks. And I was like, okay, sure. And I was like, I'm okay with that. Like, I can do that right now. We're in a position and it feels like we're helping. Sure. So that's okay. So if someone doesn't have a truck, but they have an OnlyFans, and I'm like, well, do I give you like five bucks yeah, a month? Support <laughs> support local titties. Yeah. Support local titties. <laughs> <laughs> or is this just me trying to find a weird way to circumvent my own to rule it. and to justify <laughs> Maybe both. I, I, I don't see think it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Do it, and then you're supporting locals, supporting local cities. That's so your hashtag. We, that is a one. We have so many jumbled shirt ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Write that um, one down, Zach. Okay. <laughs> Support local cities. I like it. In the process. Uh, well, even so, uh, regarding the sugar daddy thing. No, no. First, first, tell me about. Tell me if you were to do an OnlyFans. Mm, okay. Like, was this a serious consideration or were you just joking? And I want to know, like, how did you start seriously thinking about this? And like, what would you post and what would you charge? Okay, so keep in mind, I've thought about these types of things a lot over I mean, the we've, years we've joked before about it a pandemic. Lot like, I think we both, I... <laughs> we both one session, I was like, when we're talking about getting married, like, cause we were both planning weddings at this around the same time when we, when we first met and you started working on me and we were talked about like the sugar daddy thing. I was like, yeah, I mean, if I have to bang some grandmas to pay for Allie and I's wedding, like <laughs> I would take that for a team. And then I think we had that conversation of like, yep. is that cheating or is that like going to work? Well, that's right. Like where's, and I mean, a lot of that too has to do with like talking with your partner and see how they feel. And sure. blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. it's means um, to an end, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go on a limb and say I don't think Jesse really cares. For the most part, no. <laughs> <laughs> At it's, least about the OnlyFans. Like, thinking yes. about OnlyFans first. Yeah, the sugar daddy really thing, care. that's a whole different layer. It's, we'll get it's, to that. Yeah, but. we've had a lot of discussions. <laughs> 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 but, like, when I was 20, I think I was 22, um, and I was building my house, and because of that, I was poor. And I was like, oh, this is, like, this is actually really tough. And, like, what if I'm house poor forever? I looked into selling my eggs. Like, there's always things where I'm like, okay, where can I make money? Because I'm a hustler. mm -hmm. And the eggs thing didn't work out because in Canada, they don't fucking pay you unless someone pays you under the table. It's by donation. Why am I going to go through all that for a donation? Yeah. And to apply in the States, you have to have a university education to make sure your babies aren't dum-dums. Which, based on <laughs> which the means nothing. That Zach and I went to school with yeah. does not help. <laughs> no, it means absolutely fuck all because we. I know. I, I knew some seriously, seriously dumb people, yep. who 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 were just riding on a scholarship or just there because they got a lot of financial aid or whatever. Yep. Myself included. I, in <laughs> retrospect, I probably shouldn't have gone to college, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so a friend of mine, and I'm going to do, I'm going to do my best to not say names accidentally. We'll put um, any names out. I'll try to. So <laughs> <laughs> she signed up. Basically she had a slew of serious relationships that ended not bad, but just like a, she thought this was it. This was the one. And then it fizzled and whatever happened. And she was like, why am I putting so much emotional effort 
into these relationships for what? When I can have someone who pays me to do the exact same fucking thing. So mm-hmm. she signed up for a sugar daddy site. Mm. And being a female, on the back of your mind all the time, you assume you're going to get raped and murdered pretty much every day. You're like, hey, that's a sketchy alley. Don't walk that way. Oh, yeah. I just went into a room full of men. I should leave. And I, I know it's fucked up, but that's kind of how you have um, to gauge things. Sure. I'm really um, glad you said that because you, you made that comment one time during a session and that was like such like an eye opening thing yeah not a that lot I of guys agree. don't realize it was yeah it's not like i like to think that i'm pretty big supporter of women and in, in general and i mean i have friends who are very successful and powerful women personalities and i'm married to one so, but i was like i never thought of that like from a like a physical yeah. perspective of like mm-hmm. that like that is a leg- i've never had that thought very yeah. i should say rarely have i you're walked really into rapeable though don't worry <laughs> <laughs> like the the yes. main the main thing that i that i always think of is like you know back before coronavirus you know my wife would pick up a shift here and there at, at a local bar but every time she would go she would park under a, a light you know a, a light mm-hmm. in the parking lot and that's I never like I never think about time I never think like that's and that's forethought like that's she'll show up at like four o'clock four thirty or whatever for a shift that won't get done until after after nightfall but she's thinking about it ahead of time and she's parking mm-hmm. by a light even before she, even before it's dark outside you know and that's just yeah. something that doesn't even cross my mind yep well, and there's sometimes even when I'm walking where, like, if I notice someone who's going the same way as me, like, if I turn, they turn, I'm like, okay, pay attention, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just, you're just as, like, you're programmed to think that way. And I've never had anything happen, so it's not that I'm scared of, like, oh, this happened before, it's going to happen again. But you just, <laughs> you do have to just realize that it is an option, it yeah. could happen. So if you're trying to be safe, it's better than not. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where this whole sugar daddy thing came in. It's like, this sounds great, the dream, but is it too good to be true? Mm. So she met with, I think, three guys in total so far. And for all the meet and greets, she would have a friend um, be nearby to make sure, like, we're going to watch, make sure nothing's weird, like, you don't, like, leave if you don't want to kind of thing. Um, but so far, it's worked out really well for her, so I'm not really as scared. <laughs> she has one yeah. guy who's paying her 2500 a month. He's a long-haul trucker. He's only seeing her twice a month because of how much he's out of town. And basically what he does it for is he wants someone to have like the girlfriend experience with someone that knows him and remembers the story he told them last time kind of thing. And they text throughout the week um, just so he has connection really. Um, And if it turns intimate, that's fine, but he doesn't care if it doesn't. Mm. So, so far, yeah, she hasn't done anything sexual with him. She cuddled with him once while watching a movie. I would do that for this guy. Yeah. For half that. (laughs) So I think I know also... who you're talking about. I'm nowhere near as good looking, but like <laughs> a deal's a deal. <laughs> yeah. So he uh, also buys her gifts. So she has a Amazon wish list, and he randomly just buys her things off of there. So so far, I've gotten her to get me some art supplies, a new bag. <laughs> <laughs> you're benefiting. A... Oh my god, yeah. dude. <laughs> She's like, I ran out of things to buy. I'm like, uh, let me help you. So, I mean, maybe you guys haven't talked about this because I. So I also have a friend who has gone down this path and, you know, had some really interesting, I was like joking about being like her manager because she like came to me and was like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Like, what do you think? And I was like, wow, I'm interested that you came to me, but like, let's talk about this. And then we started like the site that she was using. You could like look at the guys and it says about them, like what they're looking for, what they like, what the money is, what they do, blah, 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 like all these things. And, and I was like, and then it always comes down to like, well, what's his deal? Like, what's the thing that like, why is he having to do this? And I think there are some like creepy reasons. And I think there are some like 
legitimate reasons. Like this, if this guy is a long haul trucker and he can afford twenty five hundred bucks a month, like he's probably working a lot, and it's really hard mm-hmm. to build a relationship. And yeah. And he's like, yeah, I can pay for a hand job. That doesn't matter. But like what I'm lacking in my life is intimacy and I don't have a job that can facilitate that. So right. to me, I'm like, okay, seems like a legit dude who's like, I just need someone to care about me and I'm not home enough for that to happen. I'll yeah. pay you to do that. Right. Well, and his Which- last sugar baby was over a year, but they broke it off because she was dating someone and it was getting more serious. So she felt like it was kind of cheating. Mm. And he's like, oh, I respect that. So, I mean, yeah. So what does he like, I don't know how much you can share, but like, what does he, like, what does the girlfriend experience mean in texting? If he only sees her like a couple times a month, honestly, it's like, he expects her to text him and be like, Oh, Hey, how are you? How are things? How's your day? Like literally just checking in on him Hmm. and then telling him about her life and what's going on so they can have conversation. Yeah, mm. cool. And they do have a lot of things in common, though. So that was one thing that was really important to him during the meet and greet is he wanted to be able to have someone that he could have conversations with. And it like would there's some legitimacy to that relationship, right? Like, yes. yeah, it's a transaction, but we drive on some like us, for example, our relationship started as a business transaction. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were like, hey, this was like we had fun. I think the first email and now or second you don't email have was to pay like me every time. <laughs> yeah, what did it, what was it like? It was like I think the subject line was like uh, butterfly nets and ice cream or something. Oh yes. <laughs> um, oh my god, what did that guy say again? Um, catch butterflies and get ice cream. Yeah, That's as a was. as a hangout. So like the first session, <laughs> Lacey and I we talked about it, but like we went long and like after hours we talked a lot and like we were like, wow, like we have a lot of things in common and like our spouses are freakishly similar and Lacey and I's personalities are very (laughs) similar and we're talking about all these things. And so we, you know, obviously have a, a different relationship now. Like I still pay Lacey to, to work on me. For your company. I know. I'm just (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. I got to get more out of my tattoo experience here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just kidding um okay so what like does she have multiple clients like she has two right now but she's probably gonna leave one of them because she realizes she was doing more than she had to i guess so the other guy um she's making too much money <laughs> <laughs> well she figured why why put in the effort to get paid just as much from someone that doesn't require as much effort but yeah, yeah, the yeah, other guy works smarter. Um, exactly uh he is, I think he's 40 or 30, like he's really close to 40 if he's not. And he just moved out of his parents' house. He doesn't know how to cook. He doesn't know how to do anything. Um, so he hired her to, starting, was going on dates. He would give her $100 to go on a date plus pay for whatever the date was. So restaurants, movie, shopping, whatever. Um, and then he started paying her, I think it was 200 And he would get her to cook for him in lingerie while also teaching him how to cook because he doesn't know how. Um, And then that led to $300 hand jobs. (laughs) And she didn't want to have sex because she's like, once I cross that line, I'm a prostitute. And I'm like, "Um, it's a sex worker. (laughs) But she didn't, she didn't want to do that. So handy jays that's fine she doesn't have to look at him you know (laughs) um and 300 (laughs) bucks that's worth it um but now she realizes she can get 2500 a month plus gifts and not have to touch anyone yeah so Mm -hmm. so where did she draw the line of sex worker so like what were the activities that were okay so it was like a like a very classic pretty woman no kissing scenario except she's like (laughs) <laughs> like would would she kiss? Like, yeah. Does she kiss? Okay. Yeah. Like 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 a or like a like let's make out kiss. Um, I think she'd probably. I I don't think with him she made out with him, but they they did have like the cute little kisses. But hmm. I think too, she said it depends on the person. Kind of depends on what she'll do. Yeah, I mean that because, makes sense. Like, yeah. She, yeah. Her okay. first guy, she wasn't 
physically attracted to, but the other guy, she is, like, he's her type, so she's, like, I'm more willing to do things just because, like, I find him attractive. I have a, I have a connection with him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. 300 bucks for a hand job is up there. That's expensive. And like, especially a, a disinterested penis. hand job. I'm imagining it's a disinterested. <laughs> well, exactly. Hand. And, and like, how does that, how does that approach? Is he like one day like, Hey, uh, how much for you to, you know, how much for a blow job? Oh, okay. Um, what about a hand job? Okay. Let's go with the hand job. That's more my speech. <laughs> like, it, it started with, I normally pay girls 500 for sex. Are you willing? And she said, no. And so then they went some back and forth and he's like, okay, but what, like, can you just give me a hand job then? And she's like, well, okay, but for this much. And he's never paid that much before for a hand job. So, but he's willing cause she's a smoke show. So, mm-hmm. and he's lonely and wants to get his dick wet, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's stop to take a second to talk about the sponsor for this and every week of jumbled. That would be our buddies over at audible. You guys know them. You guys love them. They uh, offer premium audiobooks to the interwebs. And if you are part of the interwebs, which you are because we don't uh, we don't ship out physical media with our audio on it, right? Head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and get a free audiobook, guys. It's really that easy. All you got to do is just go to that website, start your free trial, grab that free audiobook, on us, you guys are welcome. The audiobook that we're going to talk about for the month of May is The Comedians, Drunks, Thieves, Scoundrels, and the History of American Comedy by Cliff Nesteroff. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but that's how it looked to me. Also narrated by Cliff. Uh, the length is 15 hours and 6 minutes, so if you want to talk about getting banged for your buck, here's where you go, right? <laughs> You go to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and you get The Comedians by Cliff Nesteroff. Quick summary of this book. Here we go. In The Comedians, comedy historian Cliff Nesteroff brings to life a century of American comedy with real-life characters, forgotten stars, mainstream heroes, and counterculture iconoclasts. That's a hard word to say. Based on over 200 original interviews and extensive archival research, Nesterov's groundbreaking work is a narrative exploration of the way comedians have reflected, shaped, and changed American culture over the past 100 years. Guys, that's going to that's gonna be it. There's more. There's more to the summary, but I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to leave that one up to you guys. I would recommend The Comedians by Cliff Nesterov. But if you guys want to listen to something else, they have so many different audiobooks in so many different categories. You guys are going to find something that you're going to enjoy, and that is a jumbled and audible guarantee. So again, head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and pick up that free audiobook. We thank you. We thank Audible. And let's get back to the podcast. What's the most common request that she gets? Like, is she seeing well, any she's... patterns or like if she does these like interviews and she's like, I eh, know not this person. Like, what are her? She's still pretty new, but she already has a list of like things to watch out for. Oh, Um. so because obviously in a lot of websites like that, there's a lot of scammers. Mm-hmm. So you do have to be careful of people wanting to send you a bunch of money before they meet you, because um, a lot of times they just want your information uh, there's a, I forget what the scam is called, but let's say they'll, they'll tell you they're going to send you, let's say $1,500 and then you get the e-transfer and it's 1800 and then they say, oh shit, I typed it wrong. Can you e-transfer me back the 300? So they do that. But then when their payment actually clears, it was a fake payment. So now you just lost 300 plus whatever they sent you. So that's a major scam on those websites. Mm-hmm. Um, guys that immediately want to talk outside of the website is a red flag because like why can't we chat on here and moving to texting is normal like that's that's common but if in the first like couple messages they're like hey text me on this number you like don't do it yeah hmm. i have to save in my phone now as the godfather <laughs> and i told another friend what she was doing so she made an account and a medicinal marijuana CEO is flying here next weekend to meet her for a patio lunch date. And if things go well, 
he wants to fly her to BC once a month. So, wow. okay, sure. All right. <laughs> so she's only doing this. Is she? Does she also have an OnlyFans or no? No. Okay. So, so this is like more secretive. Like, yeah, more discreet, and that's actually one of the tags you can pick on the website if you don't want people to know. Oh, interesting. So that <laughs> would maybe likely give me the answer to my next question of would she come on the show if we kept it just like we wouldn't use name or anything or likeness no tags i th- i think so i could see it it's like i mean i mean i would be happy even like if you came to if it was like made it more comfortable because i get like do you want to go on assuming it's <laughs> the person talk about you. <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah i'd be down i think that would be so <clears throat> so interesting i want you to text me and who you think it is Okay. But I think you're correct. <laughs> okay. Um, <sighs> wow. Uh, okay. Um, so back to the question, OnlyFans. So this was happening. So you saw basically that there, like, there is a market for this, and you're obviously an attractive individual and could definitely capitalize. Well, but here's the thing. I'm an attractive Winnipegger. Like, compared to some of the shit that's on OnlyFans... It's not some of these uh, girls like wow. You I I think you don't you you haven't <laughs> had enough time <laughs> with the current Lacey. <laughs> because when I told when I first started talking to Zach about bringing you on, I think I like screenshotted some pictures from your Instagram because hmm. he was like I was talking about you. I'm like I was like, "Well, worst case scenario is she's she's pretty hot, so you get to look at her for an hour." So if the episode sucks, <laughs> yeah. and you, I I don't remember what, but I was like, here's some pictures, and you were like, damn. I think I sent some like wedding pictures that yeah. you had posted. Oh, my hair looked so good that day. Oh, <laughs> it's great. Because like, well, you can see this is my natural hair. It's pretty, it's pretty wild. Mm. But I mean, it, everything um, takes effort, right? Like, look at Zach's beard. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> could use a little loving. But so yeah. that gets me on the topic too. Why? Potentially doing an OnlyFans or a sugar daddy thing seems plausible. This is going to sound very uh, narcissistic because it kind of is. I know for a fact I can list off the top of my head at least probably 15 male clients that come to see me to spend time with me. So you're sort of already doing it just with the... That's the thing. Because like I have one client in particular. Granted, we get along very well. Um, he's Wait, this hilarious. Isn't me, we have is a lot. It? Of... <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny's getting up. Charged. First things first. Am money. I on that list? <laughs> <laughs> and this would it guy... be weird if I bought your OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I put some pictures on Instagram where, like, I showed my butt on there already, so people got that shit for free, and now I feel stupid. <laughs> No, no, no. That's the that's the like the loss leader to get them hooked, right? You're like, come give it. Um, yeah, <laughs> one client. He got his first tattoo when he was 45. He had wanted it for 10 years. It was a very simple, very small tattoo. And he just said he's you know it's taking a long time to, to take the plunge. He doesn't plan on getting any more. And I think it took like two hours, three hours maybe. But we shot the shit the whole time and had a great time. He now has two full sleeves and a leg sleeve in the process, and he's 50. And Motherfucker, he's beating me. He's a... The industry that he's in, he has to be able to hide all of his tattoos, and it's also kind of getting to the point where he's like, yeah, like, just do whatever you want. And I'm like, oh, are you sure? Fuck, this sounds very much like me. <laughs> <laughs> you still have a, a path, though. Like, it has to mean this or represent this, but do what you think looks good. And that's different. You trust me as an artist. That's true. Where this guy's like, yeah, I'll just pay for a whole day and we'll just hang out. I'm like, okay. And even in the quarantine, he's been messaging me quite a bit. Like, oh, checking in. How are you? I'm like, maybe you can be my sugar dad. <laughs> like, we already get along. I know he has the money. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just pay me and I don't cause physical pain to you? <laughs> you know? Maybe that's what he likes, though. It could be. I don't know. I I, I mean, yeah, I get that. Um. <laughs> Okay, so are you going to do an OnlyFans? 
you're ready for that to hit that subscription <laughs> button so quick. <laughs> well, I got follow-up questions. I'm trying to understand here. This is in the name of science, Lacey. Well, science. I don't know when I'm going back to work yet. It seems the soonest would be probably mid-June. Um, but if they keep to the plan they have right now, which every phase will be four weeks and testing to see how it goes, and as long as there's not, like, a resurge in... Uh, <clears throat> COVID? Yeah. Um, it could be as late as July 1st. So, like, that's a long time to make kind of chump change, you know? Um, and in all this time off, I'm doing a lot of house stuff. I'm doing renos. I've been, like, I, I added new stairs off my deck. Um, all that costs money. So, I need more money. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not off the table, but it's, it's not, not off the table, but I've also gained quarantine 10 because of cookies for supper. So I'm back on the grind. I, I do have some old photos. It's fine. No one knows when they were taken. I, <laughs> I think there is a market for every body type. And this is true. And I would say based on my preliminary market research of the people that I know of who have been making them, you're leaps and bounds above them. Like I've seen some where I'm like, People are get downloading for you, and that sounds really shitty. And that's, I know. That's but... I mean, that sounds shitty, but that's also why I'm like, well, what are you posting? Yeah, like what's on there that you have like, that much of a following? Maybe it's not a like a sex. I mean, there's nudity or or ludity or whatever you want to say, but maybe like they're really good photographer, or like they're really mm. good with lighting, or I don't. I mean, well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm str- it's a stretch. Don't get me yeah. wrong. It's probably because they show their butt. But I'm like, well, I'm kind of interested. Okay. Yep. So there's. It's. It's not a yes. It's not a no. Well, what and I would... have my friend who I did that photo shoot with just yeah. for shits and gigs. So if I was like, hey, can you make me pretty again? He'd be like, yeah, okay, I'm not doing anything. So... Hmm. All right. Um, what would be the parameters of content, or like, have you thought about? what your what your niche would be like would you try and captivate a specific well like, fetish audience or would it be more like this is just an inside look to my life which some of them are of like i'm private yeah. on social media but if if you're willing to pay then i know that you're likely not you know a scammer or some weird mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and then i will show you more of my personal life it's not all sexual right well, yeah, and it's hard to say, too, because it is becoming more saturated now. There's probably mm-hmm. going to be a lot of the normal shit. Now, in photos, people probably can't tell how tall I am. But when you see a picture of me in heels beside a normal-sized human, then the fetish comes in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Squish my face with your thighs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't post it on my page, but my friend posted it when I did the photo shoot. She was rubbing baby oil on my thighs, mm-hmm. and she's 5'1", and I was sitting, and I was still, like, taller than her. <laughs> like, it looked like I could be a spider and just, like, envelop her. Because <laughs> so, <laughs> she's little. Yeah. So, like, there could be a fetish as- aspect to it, but then also then you're getting rid of people who just want to see, like, cute butt stuff but so i think you say. can categorize right like i think you have folders of like pay oh, the, can you i'm pretty sure you can have I, I don't know i would imagine if you're posting all these pictures that there's got to be some organizational strategy like if they are not implementing a facebook hmm. if facebook came out in 2000 and what like three and had the ability to put albums photo albums together yeah same <laughs> difference come on like I would hope this website can do that. So you could be like, yeah, here's guess. my butt stuff. Yeah. Here's my home renos like stuff. Here's my here's like. Here's me being a strong girl. Look at me yeah. do things. Here's me in my like sweaty workout <laughs> gear. Like, yeah. I don't know. Huh. There's everyone's got it. Everything is a thing, right? Like, Yeah. Well, and then if I have a sweaty workout gear one, then I can also sell panties on the side. Mm-hmm. So it's like a win-win. But. There you go. Panties aren't cheap, so unless I'm getting at least fifty bucks, it's not worth it. In my opinion, it's a bit. It's a business. You have to look at your consumables, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it would also depend one on what Jesse's comfortable with, because I don't want to make him upset. I love him and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, 
But it depends how willing he is to upkeep me. For example, being in quarantine, my sugar place is closed. So I ordered an at-home kit, and he had to sugar parts of me that I couldn't reach. Mm. And his face, <laughs> he looked so concerned the whole time. And I'm like, it's fine. It doesn't hurt. Just go. He's like, oh my god, what if I, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> that is love right <laughs> so there. So funny. So, it, especially when he did my butt, that was the funniest thing. He's like, and I just, I just pull it. I'm like, yep, you just pull it. And one of the pulls, I wasn't stretching my cheek as much as I should have been. Mm. And I, I bruised love that you're a little bit. This right now. I love that I don't, you're sharing. I don't care. <laughs> He's just, <laughs> I'm, clearly I sent butthole chocolates sure. to the that's, world. That's fair. Like, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And once again, bodies are bodies. And, I mean, at this point, he was just prepping his own meal anyway, so it's not anything weird for him. <laughs> <laughs> hey There she is! <laughs> so, it's funny, because he did one strip, and he pulled it, it, like, the angle he pulled it, it was bruised. Like, immediately bruised, because it's thin mm-hmm. skin. And he's like, oh my god, I can't do this. And he laughed. I broke like, you. <laughs> Listen, you can't do one cheek and not the other. Like, you have to come back. Yeah. So... We had a little talk. I told him it's fine. It doesn't hurt. And then he finished the job. And he's like, okay, that that wasn't that bad. But I don't know if he'd be willing to do it again. Because, like, I think I scarred him. So. <laughs> yeah, he'll get used to it. He's like, so you do this all the time? I'm like, yeah. I just pay people for it. And now I can't. So, and, like, there's only so many ways you can bend to do things. So I appreciate my sugar as much more. I've messaged her. I said I, I really miss her. <laughs> Like, I didn't realize how hard the work you did was until now. It's not uh, easy. Yeah. Okay. So it depends so, how into it Jesse would be. <laughs> so, but it would be fairly, like, it would be more lewd based. Like, you're not going full cam girl, like, watch me like, shove this bowling ball at my butthole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I respect my sphincter, and I want to wear no diapers as long as I can. So I mean, that I, was no, probably a that. very drastic and <laughs> not realistic, uh, example but you know (laughs) i don't think i'd be against nudity but i don't think i would want kooka stuff because that that's what makes it dirty you know what i mean that's the Mm. line boobs are boobs whatever sometimes some of the clothes i wear i get nip slips and i'm like oh haha like i wore an outfit to the convention because it made my boobs look great and i told my client that she was on nip slip duty i'm like if you notice Fix it or tell me. (laughs) And there's that one point where she's like, oh, let me just... And she, like, pulled the shirt up. I'm like, thank you. So I don't really care about stuff I've been put on nip slip duty, and I have to say it was a little bit weird at first. Because I think it was still, like... We were still kind of form... Like, right now, if you're like, hey, nip slip... I think you actually said that at the house. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I know. I got you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because my bra strap kept falling down. Yeah. But, like, I remember the first... I think it was, like, maybe my second session. I was like... I don't know what this means right now. We don't we <laughs> haven't really esta- we haven't really established boundaries. I don't know if this is a test to see if I'm creepy <laughs> or what. <laughs> like Well, I think Do I tell you, but then you'll be like, Why are you looking? I'm like, Are you setting me up? Like <laughs> Well, and I'm I'm definitely like if I had to if I had to pick, I'd say that I'm definitely a boob guy. So I'm like the wrong person to be on next slip <laughs> duty. Ever. Like, like, okay, like, sure. <laughs> Yeah, never say gonna, anything. Yeah, oh, I never saw it. Doesn't I show don't... at all. No, oh, what? I didn't that even happened? Notice. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> uh, I think that I don't know if it's a problem. Like, I don't know if it's a character flaw or a positive. But I, I don't really have many boundaries. Like, I'm pretty open. I'm pretty mm-hmm. okay with like just about everything. And even when it comes to people that have very different opinions than me on things. I'm not like, oh, I don't like you. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Tell me more. Sure. So I think that's why we became friends because it was, I get a lot of that feedback of, I like to, like, I'm argumentative. And I would say I really love philosophical conversations and I really like mm-hmm. understanding why you think something. Yeah. And it's not like a, pr- you can't prove me wrong. It's a, Maybe you will prove me wrong. Like if you, yeah, if I, my mind. if 
Like, if I am your friend, Zach, which I am, and we've known each other for yes. quite a few years, mm-hmm. you've never come to see me, but whatever, we'll let that go. I'm a piece of shit. We've all, <laughs> we've all um, determined that, yeah. But, like, if, if we got on a topic and you were like, I don't agree with that, and I'd be like, well, you're my friend. I want to understand why. Right. And then maybe that changes my opinion. Mm-hmm. And if I'm being honest, sometimes I'm like... I know you're just, and not you specifically, but like I know that person is just spouting off random bullshit that they've heard, and they haven't really took the time to formulate their own opinion. And I'm going to poke sure. holes at it, as like as to. I like maybe... doing that. I like making people angry. Is that that's bad? <laughs> but I try and do it in a respectful way. But it's it's that idea of like it's enlightening, right? It's not yeah, it's not for the sake. Yeah. It. And me, and if I was like, hey, there might be something that I will never agree with you on, but I can say. I respect where you got, like how you came to that conclusion for yourself. And I understand why that seems like the right decision for you, Mm -hmm. but it's not for me. And you understand that that as well. I'd be like, all right, cool. Like move on next thing. No big deal. Yeah. And I think that's generally what we're missing is it's, I have to be right and you have to be wrong. Yeah. People aren't open for the discussion anymore, which I don't understand because that's how you learn. It's from hearing other opinions and other I, experiences. I had that exact experience with a mutual friend of ours, Zach, who went to Graceland with us, who now lives in Calgary. And he posted about the gun thing. And him and I were having, like, decent discourse, like, mm-hmm. respectful. Like, him and I, we know we disagree on these things, but we agree on a lot of other things. And, you know, he even said, like, we're not going to see eye to eye on this. And this isn't the right format. When this comes down, let's grab a coffee. Right. And like let's like I genuinely wanna I wanna have a better conversation on in a better format where we can actually break this down. And I was like, fuck yeah, man. Like this is exactly it. I'm not and saying And that makes it fun. I was like, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying this is what I believe in and why. And I wanna know why what you believe in and why. And then maybe we come together a solution that is what is the right decision, or maybe we change. And literally while we're having this conversation someone that he knows that I don't know comment, like went to the personal attack of like, basically you have no respect for people's lives and like this and that and oh, that. Geez. And, and I just kind of said like, I have horrible morals and values and like all this stuff because mm. I, I am against what Trudeau is doing. And, and my response was like, Hey, thanks for immediately jumping to, you know, a character attack when you've not ever spoken to me before. Right. Without ever saying, like, what do you care about? Why? What? What does matter to you? Like, you don't know what I do for a living and that my career has been based around nonprofit. Like, right. You don't know what I do for volunteer. You don't like all of this shit. But you saw that I was like, hey, I don't agree with how Trudeau handled this. And you're like, Ugh, you're a gun guy. I hate you. And you're a bad person. I was like. You were literally the problem that we, me and this other friend were just talking about of like, right. it should be, we should be able to have these conversations about anything. Well, and, and, and uh, everything's not binary, right? Like you can't, <clears throat> it's not a, it's not a black or a white yeah, situation. It was the, well, you and like one guns, thing you're a horrible person. With That's social all, media care. that Sorry, one thing with social media that drives me nuts is because a lot of people make light of situations that are serious in the form of memes. Mm-hmm. And just because you post a meme that you giggled at doesn't mean you're hardcore about whatever that is. Or sometimes it does, but you're just like, see, it, it can be funny. Um, and right. I know Jesse's gotten in shit on Facebook a couple of times where he posted something that is politically charged. And then people do that exact same thing and they like attack him like, you're a piece of shit if you believe in that. You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> And sometimes we got in a heated debate about abortion over a Pokemon meme. <laughs> he posted a picture of Pikachu with his face upside down, and all it said was Alabama in five years. Hilarious. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with that. It's funny. And oh, we, are <laughs> we are pro-choice people. We don't believe in, like, just killing everyone and everything and all the babies right. should die. But there's a reason that it exists and it helps economically. It helps women who have been in terrible situations, sure. whatever. 
Like, there's a whole bunch of reasons for why we believe in what we believe. But then a really conservative person on his page wrote a goddamn book and then attached, like, Wikipedia stats and, oh my goodness, I'm like, dude, I was just trying to say it'd be like that sometimes. Like, it's just funny. It's, right. calm down. I don't want to have this conversation. <laughs> I mean, anyone who, yeah, I, I think Jesse's Facebook post could easily be its own, like, website. <laughs> and it would be fucking hilarious because jesse yeah. makes me laugh just about everything that he posts i mean he does he posts somewhat regularly and it comes mm-hmm. and goes in waves and i'm not always on facebook to like catch it but when he does i fucking die laughing and ali and i have definitely had some funny like and yeah. i know we've com we've made comments and not not like directed towards jesse but more like making adding to like the the conversation from a sarcastic yes. or sarcastic yes. i should say satire um response but i fucking love when he posts it this is so funny well and sometimes he does it on purpose because he knows it's gonna piss people off and it makes it funnier Stir the pot. <laughs> yeah he's Stir like oh this will be pot. good <laughs> so yeah but i also have a very insensitive sense of humor so i think everything's funny nothing's ever too soon it's always funny and that's how you deal with shitty things too is you make a joke yeah. about it like i sent a selfie on snapchat uh, to a few of my friends, I put felt cute. Might get COVID nineteen later. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just making light you of it. Ha- Who cares? You gotta find a way to to, yeah. And that's you know, our, our, it, it's just humor, man. I think yeah. we're killing comedy in so many ways. Going um, back, go real quick. Going back to people who just want to write down, you know, novels, as you know, Lacey mm-hmm. said. Uh, a good piece of advice that I was given by somebody, and this was in in reference to emails. When you when you create an email and and maybe you're upset or whatever, type it all out, get it out of your system, and then erase it all. Yeah, you know, or save it, or send it to yourself, right? So you get that like feeling of I sent this. Yeah, I've, right. I've, yeah. I've heard about that too. Yeah. So, um. Okay, so before we we move on to the the more dirty side, um, so what <laughs> is Lacey's OnlyFans going to cost on a monthly subscription? Well, that's the thing. All the ones I've seen, they range so much. So, and it's hard to say too because what I charge hourly for tattooing, mm-hmm. I obviously can't charge for a subscription because that would be lucrative. Um, right. And I'm not putting something on someone forever. Although I guess they could save a photo forever, so maybe it's the same. I don't know. Would you? Would you? So then it's that that ball game of like, well, I'm not desperate. Like I don't need to do this. So do you need to work out the the profit equation, or do you be like, I don't know. Let's go wild and say like, That's yeah, awesome. man, you'll you'll you're gonna get you know pictures of my life, pictures of my butthole, and. <laughs> You know, like for a premium me, membership, you'll get chocolate buttholes shipped right to your door. Yeah. And like, you know, me building my deck and like, I don't know if you got something you're look you're interested in. Let me know. And maybe I'll do it for you for like a hundred bucks a month. And it's like, well, if you get 10 I people. Like that. Well, that's the thing. When you do math like that, you're like, oh, if 10 people. OK, I could I could fuck with that. Right. But then yeah. you're getting into the like, well, what's what's my customer conversion ratio based right. on different market levels and like, what's fancy. my current audience? Well, and, and then you... you start relating that, or you could just be like, "I mean, I I don't need to do this." So what's that? Maybe it's not hundred bucks. Maybe you're like, "There's prob." I mean, we keep talking about putting us in a dress for five hundred bucks. Yeah, someday that might happen. Yeah. Has right? anyone donated to that? No, not to the dress. Not to- <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. That has not happened yet. But I I keep saying it I'm week so after sorry. week in hopes that I'm going to catch the right ear. Um, (laughs) something, something that I sort of wonder about with OnlyFans and stuff like that is, you know, say you start posting, you know, lewd or nude stuff. There is that thing about desensitization on, on the internet as far as like Mm -hmm. that. This isn't doing it for me anymore. That's why you can't beat off to just a picture of tits anymore, Zach. Well, yeah, because it's got to be like three or four dicks and an asshole. Yeah, no. Um, Now you're on e-fucked Googling the weirdest things. (laughs) I'm just saying. I I do wonder if there's something to that where it's like, 
you know, maybe initially you see a good amount of money coming in, but over time, oh, sure if there's a, a decrease and it just based on, you know, the same content well, you gotta find being your put niche. out or yeah. Right. I suppose that's like, true. Like in general, people's flavors are going to change. Right. Sure. But if you, and that's why I asked of like, I mean, if you're going to do it from a business perspective, it's like, well, what are the most profitable only fan sites and like what are they focused on like what are they capitalizing is it a fetish there's is it some a... that i've seen that aren't nude at all and they're some of the top rated people um and a lot of it is fitness but it's like girls working out in like a thong and a bra instead of workout gear and that's drawing the the crowd hmm. and a lot that's of it too I mean, has right? to do with even just body type like they don't yeah. care what the girl's doing she has this amazing body we just want to see it yeah. yeah, and that was the example in that article. It was like she had this ass. Like she was she was like a, a a curvier, heavier girl. She was attractive, but she wasn't like, you know, mind blowing. Like she was a good looking girl. She had a specific body type and she's like, people seem to really like my body type. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was her market. She was like the, the the like she did like the girlfriend experience thing and like the here's my butt and here's my butt in the window and like whatever like the people loved her butt here's my, here's no, it was my like, butt it's hold on like, hold on here's my butt and then here's my butt in the window dude it's like you're know, shopping man. it's like you're it's like but your no, window but shopping like you gotta find if if the butt is the focus point so if 90 percent of your audience is i want to see your butt well it's like you're not just like the production quality right you can't just be like Here's like kind of my butt and, you know, maybe like yeah. part of my foot because of my angle. And like, here you go. It's on a shitty cell phone, right? Like, yeah. okay, wait, I have a, it's on topic, but it's off topic. I want your guys' opinion on what this meant, although I'm pretty sure I know what it meant. So <laughs> as I've mentioned at tattoo conventions, I try to look like a high class escort for the most part. <laughs> okay. Um, One, I'm sitting and getting sweaty. I might as well look cute. Two, mm-hmm. It draws people to my booth. Like, even when I was tattooing Johnny uh, at the last convention, one of the guys who was with the news was like, can I take a photo slash video of you guys? It's like Beauty and the Beast. I was like, well, okay, sure. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So it works. Sex sells. It's just the way it is. Yeah, for Um, sure. So there is a person, there's another tattoo artist who actually started at the same shop as me, but uh, I believe two years my senior and he had moved to a different location by the time I started there. But he would come in every now and then. Just be, hey, how's it going? When I started tattooing, I actually started my apprenticeship when I was 17. Uh, but started tattooing when I was 18. So I was just a baby. And I think he's... He's for sure 10 years older than me. He might even be older than that. I'm not entirely sure. But on social media, he doesn't follow me because he doesn't like my art style. He's more traditional tattoos, so what I do is, like, blasphemy to him. So, Mm. there has been other conventions where we see each other, and because we kind of know each other, we usually do, like, the nod. Like, the, hey, and then we keep walking, whatever. Uh, We don't really talk ever. Uh, We've, like, audibly said hi before, but that's it. This year... uh, It's the end of the convention. I haven't had a chance to check out all the people that were there. So I'm walking around. And my outfit wasn't actually that slutty. And I had a sweater on because it was chilly. But it still got his attention. And I walked by him as he was cleaning his booth. And I did my annual, hey. And then kept walking. And he went, oh my god, Lacey. How are, get over here. How are you? And I'm like, oh, this is new. And... Mm. within the first 30 seconds he goes yeah you've uh you've really grown up (laughs) i'm like okay interesting and then in in the back of my mind he met me when i was 18 and i was super young and i mean i'm pushing 30 now so yeah i have grown up that's what happens chronologically Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then he's like oh we should get together for drinks sometime talk about the old shop it was so crazy there and i'm like yeah, totally. He's like, you know, I just I just can't get over how much you've grown up. I'm like, okay, that's two. That's weird. And <laughs> as I'm about to walk away and we kind of like chat a little bit more because he asked like, 
what happened to one of the other guys we worked with, so I told him what shop he's at now. He's like, yeah, well, it's really nice seeing you. You just, you're so grown up. I'm like, okay, three times. I'm like, okay, bye. And I walk away. And I go back to my booth, and I'm talking to one of the piercers, and I'm like, okay, so this motherfucker just said how grown up I was three separate times. Is that weird? And she's like, that sounds like kind of creepy. And as I'm telling her the story, he walks by my booth, and from probably about 20 feet away, he goes, all grown up, and points at me, and yells it across the aisle. (laughs) And as I'm telling the piercer this, and she's like, Oh, he's a fucking freak. <laughs> That's weird. And yeah. fast forward to later that week. Now keep in mind, he doesn't follow me on social media because he doesn't like my art style. I've been following him forever. But the day I post the videos of me doing the photo shoot on my story, he viewed every single one of them. And he's never viewed any of my other stories ever. And he still doesn't follow uh-huh. me, so that's rude. <laughs> But is saying the term you're all grown up essentially That's super fucking weird. The super one time weird. one time I get it where he's like, Oh, like you were yes. my apprentice, like look at you go now, like I'm proud of you from like a you made it, you mastered your yeah. craft, but it doesn't sound like that was Mm-mm. his intention. No, it got weird no. so fast. And I don't understand what he's digging for there of like were you supposed <laughs> to be like, Oh, I'm still a little schoolgirl at heart. That's like, what I was that... just thinking. Like, like that's creepy. Well, it's creepy it's as so creepy. fuck, right? But Ugh. but and I also think there's you know I don't know, like I I expect if I if I'm talking to a woman who is, you know, eight eighteen to twenty, she's mostly the woman she's gonna be, right? There, yeah. There's not there's not a whole lot that changes beyond that. So saying that you've grown up is there's something else there, right? That yeah. that's not that's not just normal. I I can't put my finger yeah. on it, but he's I definitely he into something. Stunned by, uh, I mean, it's not really a, a new body because you've been pretty fit for a few mm-hmm. years now. But maybe that was like a drastic change for him. He never I mean, really maybe. Recognized. But like. But I mean, I don't know. you, you weird. weren't, you, it's not like you're th- this crazy, ugly duckling either. Like you're just more fit. Like th- I don't, right. if that makes sense. No. Yeah. Well, and well, that's the thing too, though. When he would have met me, I definitely wouldn't have the same body necessarily, but I was thinner because I was 18. So I was thin. And then it turns out when you move out and all you eat is pizza, you get fat. No one told me. <laughs> so- <laughs> Where the fuck were you? High school? <laughs> So when he met me, I was still like a smaller person, but definitely yeah. now with booty gains and whatnot, mm. you know, there's, I'm probably more shapely now, but I've always had the carrier derrier, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say, but it was just like, I bet if I made an OnlyFans, he would fucking subscribe for at least a month just to see. I bet you I, anything. I feel like now in the name of science. <laughs> we just need to know who all does it. In the name this of is, science. This is the threshold, Lacey. <laughs> oh my god. John- <laughs> his, his brain is blown right now. I don't you, even know what's like, going on in there. Legit, you could you should message this guy and be like, hey. I'm thinking about doing this. Doing some market research with people's business opinions that i respect what do you think is a reasonable amount that i could charge for this type of content because he's definitely coming back with what he's gonna pay and then you can just exactly and then then you can jack it up just a little bit right just jack it calls bluff call just jack it up just a little bit and maybe he's like oh well you you sure have grown up so like at least 200 bucks (laughs) you sure have grown up (laughs) And, like, really, what's your risk here? He might be like, oh, that's really weird, Lacey. Like, why would you do that? And be like, oh, well, you're not, your opinion doesn't really matter to me. So, moving on. I was just checking. Right. Bye. Yeah, this, that's not that's mu- the market not much study to lose. right there. Yeah. I think you're right, though. I think this guy does. Huh. Well, now I'm, I kind of want to ask a few people now, like, would you pay for this? And what would you expect to see? Huh. Because I can think of three people that would definitely answer. 
either because of interest or because they don't care about talking like things like that. Yeah. So they'd be like, well, if I'm paying this much, this is what I want. Hmm. This, there, some research can be done. This is true. I mean, I, I would, I think you should do some, I'm sure there's some studies now on market research and only fans and what content and demographics and like how to market yourself. Cause it is going to be like, the next it i mean there's already people who have only fans saying like i have x amount of only fan subscribers sign up for this only fans and i'll show you like what Even i'm doing yeah. to get them my right? butt my butt in a window yeah, my butt in the window <laughs> man you got to have creative shots zach is what i'm saying it's all about the angles hashtag it's ad the with angles Pella. and like the situation cuz you're right right like it's that escalation yeah like yeah. You just, you got to find new and creative ways to share the exact same object to keep mm-hmm. people engaged so they keep paying. So it's like, you got to figure that out. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of my followers though, that I have on Instagram, uh, cause I have a business account. I believe 74% of my followers are female. Hmm. So my, concern... I think there's a lot of female subscribers though. Oh, I, I mean, maybe, I mean, that would be a market, right? That would, that's what you, when you, so again, so then it's a conversation of do you convert your current socials as a starting point for this platform, mm. which there's risks to that, or do you start completely fresh? You start fresh. I think the I think, you know, your your tattooing obviously is is where your where your heart is with it. It's where mm-hmm. you've already developed a lot of stuff with it. So I don't think you'd want to use that platform well, I wouldn't want to, to like, jump off. Yeah. You know? I'm I wouldn't just want to use say... it and then taint it. And people are like, oh, that slut, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, and th- <laughs> so, I mean, but you could occasionally do like small, like, hey, just in case here's you this like behind know. the scenes on my OnlyFans. And I mean, I'm totally willing to let you tattoo me topless for your OnlyFans. <laughs> Of course you just, are. Just <laughs> Johnny, you're, you're, man. I will make tell that me how sacrifice. grown up I've gotten? No, that's, that's fucking weird. There's a difference between pervy and appreciation for a human body and right. that level of fucking well, weird. Yeah, just let me know when that, when that's slated to happen and I'll do the month subscription as well. <laughs> you'll finally get the passport i'll be i'll be topless yeah. too zach so it'll be great oh, perfect perfect <laughs> oh, God. oh man so funny uh so i mean i really want to dig into i want to do the same experience with the sugar daddy thing because i feel like if you've had conversations with jesse i want to know about thresholds but i do feel like Maybe we can hold that for another episode, mm-hmm. especially if you think your friend oh, might come on. Yes. And then it, we can really, really dig into it. And maybe there'll well, be some market research. Yes. By then, too, uh, my photos should be approved. And I'll have either quit by then or have become successful. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want so patio you, furniture. So if you've, so you've like officially <laughs> applied. So there's like some yes. level of. Man, I, I have so many questions, Kay. I'm not going to answer. We need to log off right now before we go down this next <laughs> hour. <laughs> All right, we'll uh, we'll close it out. Lacey, it's always great to have you on, bud. Oh, yeah, it's thank you. It's always fun. I love it. Okay, guys, you know the spiel. Uh, send all your emails to jumbledpodcast at gmail.com or johnny.jumbled at gmail.com. Follow us on all social media at jumbledpodcast. Uh, don't follow us in real life because that's creepy. We talked about that on this podcast. And um, let's see here. Head over to audibletrial.com slash jumbled and get your free 30-day trial. Also, head over to patreon.com. You pay that $500 and I'll finally shut my mouth about getting Johnny and I an address. How about that? <laughs> it's only going to take one time for me to stop talking about it. So just, you know, it's We're like ripping a band We're going to Lacey's off. new clients. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> We're going to be on Lacey's Amazon wish list. I want to see these dumbasses in a dress. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> All right. And uh, leave us a uh, five star rating and review on iTunes. That would be appreciated. And I think uh, I think that's going to do it. Share share the podcast with your family, friends, coworkers, anybody, just not my grandma. That's the one rule. And uh, we appreciate you guys. And we will see you guys next week for another episode of Jumbled, your favorite podcast about science. 
and economics. <laughs> and gun control. <laughs> A little bit of anatomy as well. I think. <laughs> A little bit of anatomy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys.